Hello! In this video, we are going to discuss what is Bloom's Taxonomy, a theory of how people learn. Have you ever walked out of a class and had trouble remembering what the main points were? Have you ever read over the same paragraph for required reading for class over and over again, trying to make sense of what the ideas may mean? These are common questions and issues faced by many learners in adult education who struggle to find a way of organizing all the facts and knowledge they are being asked to understand. This often happens as they are not aware of some of the facts and knowledge they are, are trying to learn are actually at different levels of complexity and importance. As an example, a student may need to learn 30 concepts for a biology class without realizing that they could be tested in various ways. For example, they may be asked for their understanding of the concept or to apply the concept in some new situation or even analyze the concept's properties. Because many students have never thought about their learning process and specifically how ideas build upon other ideas to create more complex understanding and possibilities, these students often take the approach of trying to learn everything they can in a very superficial or surface manner. It is therefore important to consider how you can organize your learning to ensure that it is as meaningful and useful as possible. Here are three steps that can help you use Bloom's Taxonomy to better organize your own learning. Step one, know the difference between a superficial learner and a learner who tries to gain deeper understanding. Usually, the surface learner sits back, just listening to what is being said, and then makes or takes notes of what they remember. Alternatively, the deep learner takes an active role in their learning. Besides listening, they are also asking questions and making their own notes. These questions may be out loud to the instructor or to fellow students in the class, or they could be to their self as a way to think about the ideas in a more meaningful way and generate their own understanding in the form of answers. This step can be considered the development of a question and answer method of active learning. Step two, establish your learning into six progressive levels. Each level gets more complex than the previous, which means that to be successful at a higher level, you need what you have gained from the lower levels. Bloom's taxonomy of six levels of learning are, one, remembering, two, understanding, three, applying, four, analyzing, five, evaluating, and six, creating. Each level of Bloom's taxonomy requires a particular way of thinking about ideas, which can also be encouraged by asking particular types of questions. At the first level of remembering, a student develops questions that promote remembering, memorization, and the recall of information. At the second level of understanding, a student develops questions that promote the explaining of ideas and concepts being learned. At the third level of applying, a student develops questions that promote applying the information they are learning in some familiar situation. At the fourth level of analyzing, a student develops questions that promote their ability to offer an analysis by breaking the information being learned into parts for, of different relationships that can now be explored. At the fifth level of evaluating, a student develops questions that promote their ability to evaluate specific decisions of, or courses of action that they are learning. And the sixth level of creating, a student develops questions that promote their ability to generate new ideas, products, and their ways of viewing based upon what they have learned. In this step, the importance is that the student pay attention to what is going on both in the course and in the course readings to determine what type of learning they are currently being asked to do as well as what type of learning they may need to do in the future. When the student is able to identify the correct level, they can determine what the appropriate types of questions to ask may be and then make their notes in the appropriate question and answer format. Step three, use the question and answers you have developed using Bloom's taxonomy to review and study. Read the questions and answers you've made and develop higher level questions and answers to
to continue to increase your understanding. Studying for a test can then take the form of asking the questions out loud and then seeing if you were able to recall the answer previously developed. To summarize, any learner can utilize Bloom's taxonomy to organize their learning to be deeper and more meaningful. By utilizing a question and answer format that draws upon Bloom's taxonomy and its levels of questions, a learner can determine what ideas are most worthwhile and then can focus their energy to develop their deepest possible understanding.